Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Pastor David, thank you for joining us today in Unfiltered. Well, thank you, John. <laughs> uh, today's topic, and thank you guys for tuning in, really is based from your Bible study last night. And as you're going through wrapping up Romans, uh, you're talking, Paul was describing those who gave themselves to, up to cleanliness, but it says, for this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. Mm -hmm. And the first listed sin or the first listed vile passion is homosexuality. Was Paul intentional in bringing the sin of homosexuality up first? Because later on he does list murderers, envy, strife. But he first tends to point that out. And that's caused a lot of communication within Christian circles, the LBGTQ circle plus. Uh, and you know some are saying that's judgment. Uh, others are saying it's included in all the list of sin. Why was Paul, or was he intentional to name that sin first? You know, he was intentional because God created man and woman with a purpose. And Paul in, in Romans chapter 1 makes it clear. He says they have left the natural use of the woman. And uh, the women were burning with an, a natural desire for other women. That's what he's saying. So when you look back in Scripture at the original creation, God intended male and female. He created male and female. Why? So that they might be fruitful and multiply. So no woman with another woman can be fruitful and multiply. Mm -hmm. And same is true with a male with another male. And so he said it was part of this particular um, sin is part of the initial, re uh, initial occurrence at the fall. And so it was actually the choosing of uh, a, a male by a male was actually making a choice against God's design and the naturalness of the male-female relationship. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I use several commentators, and they're all older. I don't use the newer commentators normally. I use older ones because they haven't been infected with the uh, woke agenda that many, uh, uh, many quote-unquote teachers today have been affected you know, infected by. And so they're just giving what the scripture actually says. And so I normally will use somebody that was writing their commentaries in, in the 1800s normally. And so the commentators that I use when I'm studying and preparing a study, they're all unified in, in, that, one, in that one thing and, and pointed out that he presented this particular lifestyle first because it undermines the entire created order that God intended through the um, male and female reproducing. And he said they, in, instead of doing that which he had commanded, they have exchanged God for their own philosophy and their own lies and their own way of, of making uh, excuse for their passions that, they, that, that, that are burning and their desires that are, are wrong. Years ago, I remember reading a quote somebody uh, had, had made where he said, there have always been homosexuals and intellectuals who make excuses for them. And so that's exactly what is true. And he says, concerning the homosexual lifestyle, he said that they, they basically pay the penalty for that sin with their own bodies. And I was mentioning last night in terms of um, the diseases and the various other things that are, are part of uh, the actual homosexual lifestyle that they have chlamydia and syphilis, that there are a, such a variety of STDs as well as uh, cancers and a variety of things that I won't even go into because I don't, I don't really want to repeat what I had to say last night, but it is so part of that particular lifestyle. For the longest time, the, uh, the uh, medical professions, those who drew blood and, and created uh, uh, medications for um, hepatitis and all would take the the blood from the homosexual community because the homosexual community was known for its um, having hep hepatitis because of their sexual practices and that was very normal until AIDS mm -hmm. when AIDS came they had to stop taking the blood from that community because it was a high infection rate and so this is all if anybody had a desire to look at it this is all, it's all been published, it's all out there, John. But you always have a, uh, uh, an intellectual who will defend this kind of behavior that God has said is, is, uh, is worthy of judgment. And 
results in in the the destruction of their own bodies. You know, so anybody who says that is going to be called by the woke uh, mm -hmm. people today. Oh, you're just harsh and judgmental. But uh, I don't listen to that. That is that is always uh, stated by those who don't read their Bibles and don't understand it. And I would say those who claim to be Christian and think that it's judgmental to speak concerning sin and the, the uh, repercussions of it, they don't read the Bible at all. They haven't read Romans, <laughs> definitely, and they haven't read uh, Matthew 23, mm -hmm. where Jesus pronounces his woes on partic particular um, things that are, are being said and taught and believed by people. And, and I think that... Um, it just it's just unfortunate for the church. Listen, if we want to have any real revival, as we've been speaking about, whether there's one that's actually beginning or whether it's an actual revival, well, you're going to have to get away from the sin, the sin that encompasses our lives, the, the sin that besets us. And you have to turn away from it. And for those who say, well, they were born genetically that way, I pointed out last night the research, and it's not a Christian or conservative organization yeah. that's pointing this out. You can, once again, you can look it up for yourself. But these are just people who are, you know, uh, scientists who are, uh, who are stating very clearly there is no such thing as a homosexual gene. There's no homosexual gene. It has not been discovered because there isn't one. You know, it's, uh, it's a matter of, of, of things that, that, that children went through, things that perhaps were done to them. I mean, there are so right. many testimonies of how they were introduced to that kind of lifestyle. And so homosexuality is pointed out as the first sin that Paul begins to speak about, but then he goes into a list of right. so many others. But yeah, it is uh, the chief sin he determined because... To, to say because uh, women are are created have been created in such a way that they were they they actually represent faith and purity and modesty and compassionate love and kindness and nurturing those are qualities that that many young women today have failed to understand mm -hmm. are are beautiful and so he naturally says the women and he speaks of the women because what an affront to what they were created for right. and he speaks of the men who have become effeminate. Uh, men, he speaks of as catamites, who are uh, pursuing uh, physical relations with, with boys and all. And he's saying this is, this is evil. It, it is an evil. And today the, there are people who are actually advancing the cause of pedophilia. pedophilia. It, it's just, it's, we're living in the last days and it's showing itself. And instead of the church rising up and saying, no, thus saith the Lord, we have people who claim to be Christians who defend that. Mm -hmm. Those are sins God said, I'm going to bring judgment on you for. And, and the list, including the, the, the sin of homosexuality, is very serious. I mean, these, Absolutely. and Paul says that, uh, uh, and, and you'll look at it next week, is therefore you are inexcusable. You're inexcusable. And, and that is, there's a heaviness to that, mm -hmm. that there's no way how we can spin it or dress it up. It, it's serious. You have to explain it away. I think particular sins like that, the things that are done in secret, um, when people are initiated into those kinds of sins, they're not going to tell you they had a very pleasant experience mm -hmm. at all. They have to be convinced that this is something that is natural and normal, even though it takes days for them to heal up after right. their experiences. There are things people don't know about what takes place in those kinds of relationships. And because uh, one particular form of uh, intimacy has become um, actually uh, more common in heterosexual relationships, mm -hmm. uh, people don't understand that their bodies were not made for that. Their bodies and their muscles and everything that relates right. to that were not made for that, and yet they're destroying themselves. All in the name of love. <laughs> uh, in lust, yeah, they, they think it's love. You know that, I know that they call it love. No, no, love doesn't harm one another. Right. Well, thank you, Pastor David. That was very insightful. And, and it was, you know, I was listening to the study last night. And if you didn't have a chance to see the study, you can go to our Facebook page or our YouTube page and, and just type in Calvary Chapel, Chino Valley. And you can see last night's study as you cover Romans chapter 1 verses, it was uh, 20... 
four to 32, mm -hmm. as you looked at that last yeah. night, very in-depth study. And, and we do look forward to our Sunday morning study, uh, He is Risen. Yeah, it's going it, to, well, no it's, no, it's not He is Risen because I'm still dealing with them. It, the burial of Christ. Oh, the burial of Christ. That's right. I should know. I was looking at the notes earlier. Well, you know, that kind of shows what you really are like in church, John. <laughs> so we do want to invite you guys to come out and join us. Our services at 830 and 1045. And it's always a great opportunity to invite a friend to come out and join and hear God's word and, and get in worship together and fellowship. And then on Saturday, the 25th, for anybody who serves in any capacity at our church, uh, Pastor David, on behalf of Pastor David, would like to invite you guys to come on out and, and hear from you, you, share a little bit. Well, we have an open-hearted conversation. And it is, once again, for those who are presently serving. It isn't something that people should come to just because they want to know. Right. It's for people who are serving. I want to spend time with those who are serving. So we look forward. That's at 9 a.m. in the banquet hall. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you. And again, thank you guys for tuning in. Pastor, thank you so much for your time. Of and and uh, we hope you guys enjoyed this. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.